stream all day yesterday. But um, I, I've spent many, many hours this season trying to figure out Sunken Citadel plus Castle Garenbrig plus Primeval Titan, and I'm, 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 I'm at this at the moment at this moment in time kind of convinced that there is not a deck uh, built around that package that is not that is doing anything meaningfully better than Amulet Titan. I do think that you could try to have a build of Amulet Titan that is more focused on Castle Garenbrig, Sunken Citadel, um, like just just playing four of each. Uh, and I, I am still kind of on the fence if I want to spend a lot of time working on that or not. Like I, I don't know how how interesting that is exactly. Um, that being said, I kind of circled back to this idea. Um, this is not the first time we've played a green coffers deck, but the first time we played it, I think the build was, like, a little too crazy. If you remember, what we were doing in the, like, the first time, we were trying to go Hour of Promise into Emrakul the Aeon's Torn, where it just, the, the math worked out if you, like, cast a Hour of Promise, you, um, and you untapped and had any land, you would have 15 mana. And I thought that that was kind of interesting, but... You just don't need to go that big. You just don't need to go that big. And so, like, this list is kind of a combination of inspiration from that, and then also the Mono Green, like, Eldrazi Temple, Emrakul the uh, Promise deck, where being able to go, like, Eldrazi Temple and copy it a bunch with Vesuva and Sucking Citadel is kind of cool. And so, the, the idea here is that we have, we're like, we're very, very, we're very in on assembling Urborg Coffers. I'm like, the Mono Black Coffers deck, we are trying to do this every single game. Kind of, kind of like Tron, this is our player trying to do this every game. And, ideally, we're also trying to, like, get multiple copies of Cabal Coffers in play. You really want, like, two at least. And so, having access to Vesuva to do that has been, has been really nice in this deck. Vesuva's been really good for me so far. Um, and so, you just kind of have, like, the same familiar package here where you have stirrings and scrying for card selection you have explore and grazer for early ramp i think dismember is a really important card to be playing because of magus of the moon at the moment uh, so i have two main one side also yogmoth pretty popular nice steps of main deck dismembers um and then we are our top end is karn ring golos archon em one emrakul i think one emrakul is a good number um golos is usually very good in these decks you can cast it uh for a little bit easier with uh, coffers on turn three, turn four, it gets you your second coffers. You know, could go kind of crazy. Um, but I was I was kind of struggling on like what the next best top end was. And after like after trying a few different things, I was trying Cityscape Leveler for a little bit. I was trying more Emrakuls. I I find that just just I think just hardcasting Archon is the best thing. Um, I like if you're gonna eight eight mana is like it's hard to kind of articulate this, but eight mana is like a pretty good number I think for your next top end threat. Um, need more forests. Too many forests. Need more swamp. Uh, why? Why do you need any swamps in this deck? <laughs> okay, this. I guess this is the other thing. This card, Cabal Coffers. It, even in the Mono Black Coffers deck, this this card doesn't do shit without an Urborg. You know what I mean? It's, they have so many non swamps at this point with their fields and citadels. Like this card just almost never like has text <laughs> without Urborg, anyways. So just like just scrying your Urborg, just <laughs> stirrings for Urborg. Magician of the 29, Acidic Acidic of the 17, General Mongoose of the 23, Theo of the 12. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Yavamaya, though. Yavamaya. We're going to go Grazer into Citadel, into Scrying for Urborg, Dismember Up, Scrying for Coffers, with four mana because we have the Sun in Citadel. No! Oh, fuck! Damn it! <laughs> uh, good start, huh? Good start. So I meant to, uh... Oh, the Citadel Mirror. They're naming blue here. Okay, I'm gonna go Scrying for Urborg, then I can go land Urborg Scrying Grazer. Ooh, they're the uh, Team of Reclamation deck. Just to check the here, I guess. Okay. Okay. When Drake is about to investigate, create a clue token. Every second, I start to put a counter. Um, I do like that card a lot. I, I, I do think Asmo Coffers is a good deck and a fine deck for that card. 
Um, let me explore first. So I got six mana here. Let's see if this Golos resolves. Probably will not resolve. Maybe good stirrings. If I find a second coffers, could just try to double spell. They're also you. Know, they got their turn three cryptic command. Okay. Take second Golos here. Mr. Sari, 36, happy three years. We're doing well. It's a long fucking time. Oh, top deck grazer. Alright, so I'm one mana short of Golos into Karn. Or Karn into Golos. Does kind of feel like we're in a spot where they're just going to counter everything I ever do, slam a reclamation, and kill me. <laughs> But I built your deck, so hard to feel too bad. <laughs> Is Dryad... Uh, I, I had four Dryads in my first draft, two Dryads in my second draft, and now I have zero Dryads because I was pretty unhappy with the card. And most of my sweet ideas that just randomly popped in my head are these epiphanies, like what if I played Mono Green Covers as an intentional process. It is a very intentional process. I, I work on this shit hours a day, every day, <laughs> and it, it's like, it's not... Just random pop in the head. I don't know. It's just it, it takes a long time to get there on a lot of stuff, and uh, it's it's kind of difficult to describe. But it's a lot of active focus is uh, something I've been trying to do, like intentional active focus. If they counter this one too, I'll probably concede. Maybe take one draw step. Gonna bring in the Immerkul to Aeon's Torn, I think. I'll concede to a Cryptic Kabam. <laughs> okay, Archmage's Charm. I sure did build the... this. <laughs> hmm... I think they could be they could be pretty flooded and I could draw a banger, so let's uh let's not pack it in just yet. Okay. That can contribute to potentially flooded. Like a big shark maybe. Super dead. Super dead. Okay, dismembers out. Um Emrakul the Aeon's Torn coming in. They're kind of weak to the ring. I might board in the fourth ring. I also might board in, like... I have Besage you for their Reclamations. I don't know if I want Force of Vigor. They just, with the four, just board in the fourth ring. It's be very threat dense. Especially because they shouldn't be very good at keeping me off my Coffers plan. No valence side. Well, we do have Emrakul. Okay, if this if one, oh we do have it we do have a forest actually. So we do have coffers plus Urborg. Yeah, I actually can't mulligan this. Despite this fact, we have second Urborg. I just totally <laughs> didn't see this forest in my hand for a second. Do always get the fifth ring off card and paper. Mm hmm. True. Like, first force over fourth goes since Karn grabs it. Um, I don't know if I... That's true of any artifact. Karn grabs it, you know. <laughs> but I, I just want to have be as threatened as possible, I think. And even when you force a wreck, you are, you know, you're two for one in yourself. Ooh, nice to get to Vesuva, the, uh... 
coffers here. I think I'll just explore this turn. Okay. You didn't grab ring under Leyland with Karn? Yeah, but they're not playing Leyland Binding. Golos is definitely the better card to try to jam here. Although, let me let me stirrings first. If I see it, if I find another threat, which I did, I also found Emrakul though. So if I take Emrakul, cast Golos, Golos gets countered. Emrakul costs ten. Next turn I could have nine, but if I draw a land, I have ten. I could alternatively I could take Vesuva. I've already played a land this turn, but if I take the Suva, I'm just casting the Simracle Day on Storm, so. Let's take the Vesuva. And. Probably, probably gonna wait a turn on the Golos instead of just running it into the counter. I do maybe let them charm Jol too. Can't you replay the Urborg for 10? I was counting replaying the Urborg as my, as my ninth mana. Because I go. Two activate for five, and then this is plus three, eight, nine. Oh, ten. Okay, I miscounted. Then Aeon Storm may be better. I mean, em Emrakul, th th this card is like is like game over against them, though. Unless we get, you know, like Reclamation Loops this fast, which, which is pretty unlikely. I don't think I've ever even really seen, seen that. Alright, it's Tuesday, or Wednesday morning. <laughs> We're just going to cast an Emrakul in turn 6. Counting Urborg between the Yard's third type. Just make it cost 10. Ah, I see, I see, I see. The only thing we really don't want to see is Nexus of Fate, I guess. Very, very unlikely we, like, get full comboed here. It's, like, so difficult to do this fast, but not not 0%. Any big events coming up? I'm going to the MagicCon Chicago to play in the, the GP thing. Uh, I don't really have... I guess there's, you know, there's RC Dallas, which I'd like to qualify for, but I haven't played in any, any of the RCs, RCQs. So that'll be a challenge. Okay, I cast Emrakul, the Aeon Storm. I don't think I put anything in their deck to deal with this, besides like Cryptic Command taps and stuff. So, this is probably pretty good. Oh yeah, the Hunter Burton. Yeah, oh yeah, the Hunter Burton. In a month and a half, wait, is, is Hunter Burton in March or is it February? Okay, 26 lands, none in the hand. Okay, gotta keep this. I think I put back Explore. Where should I look at cool? I would not like to pay two life. No, thank you. So we really want the scrying to resolve. Get Urborg, play Coffers, copy with Vesuva. Be well on our way. So we get Ice this turn. We don't find a Urborg here. I'm gonna take Cascading Cataracts. I wanna be able, I wanna be able to cast the the car next turn if I want to. So I'll have a super here. Hmm. Gotta 
go for it. It's a lot, a lot easier to resolve something when they only have two mana up. No reclamations, nice. Uh oh. Rough. Yeah, gonna be very tough to win from this position. Get five cards in their hand, six mana. They lose just one hell of a card, huh? Go by opponent's playing this deck, though. It was, it was so sweet. Definitely did not have as good a second stream uh, as we did the first stream. Usually pretty good against decks like ours, too. Are there any other... Where are the draw? Having the ramp spells are really important. Maybe we have a little bit of faith that we have, you know, four Sturgs, four Scrag, four Coffers on the draw. And we have one, two, three looks at any of those cards, and we just find it immediately. Nice. What's it like when you rip the deck and does well and you face it on stream? Ah, it's pretty normal. Just a Wednesday. So I can't cast the scrying this turn, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Lucy thinks it's her banana dog. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but it's just a normal banana. <laughs> Alright, we... This matchup should be, uh... Good. Let's say. No. We drew Vesuva for turn. Okay, so I guess just Vesuva, Coffers, Golos for Coffers. Cast two Archons next turn on... Or, I guess we'll get another Vesuva. We find a Solitude. And they just hardcasted. Love that for us. I think I activate a coffers, then use the scrying mana. I can get a uh, sage hero layer off the next one. Just make sure that I can cast uh, cast anything I draw off these archons. Turn four, <laughs> four, turn four, seven lands in play, four cabal coffers. It's not whatever, but you know, ringer card. Okay, nice to find us pick up a stirrings. Okay, so now we can scrying up Bob uh, Sage you. Filter the cataracts, I guess, maybe. Uh, I didn't discard Salty, they sacked it. They had one in play already.
They find an Omnath. Omnath not nearly as scary, of course, once uh, lands have already been played. Uh, ring definitely, definitely what they want here. Although we can kill the binding on their turn to make them sack the Nissa before for they get another landfall trigger. So I guess we just scrying first though. We find a card. So, uh, Sundering Titan time, and then I, I need to I need to leave the cataracts up for. Oh, I guess I should. Play the Vesuva first. Okay, so let's just see if they concede to this Karn. Okay. Good enough. Okay, uh, yeah, with Ring and Play, Archon doesn't trigger. Or ring with protection for anything, Archon doesn't trigger. Do you expect Blood Moon? Out of the four color deck, I expect it uh, almost zero. Especially not in the main deck. They just, they just had perfect mana, and they were using all of, or most a lot of it. I guess not all of it. Okay, another Emrakul the Aeons Torn matchup. I'm gonna give one Dismember in. Could maybe bring in one Force for their bindings. Again, we just have the Besages and the like, Haywire Might. Oh, we have a we have Yavimai in the deck. We should have Yavimai in the deck. We had the last second. Okay, very similar to our first gen. I'm gonna keep again. Go back Archon, I guess. Yeah, I mean the the chance is like it's not zero that they have Magus or Blood Moon, but it's it's very uncommon, and I it, I would I would be very surprised and. You know, sometimes sometimes you can be surprised, but I'm not. It's not something that at the moment I'm really thinking much about. I guess. Turn to Nissa. Nice. This is so good. I'm glad that the Nissa builds are kind of coming back. I always like them like so much more than the uh, like Fable builds. The Vizuas have been really, really good in this list. Got here from the uh, the like Eldrazi Temple deck we were playing. When it finds a Solitude, okay, not too not too concerned with Solitude this game. <laughs> no, near. Far wherever you are. Rest in peace, sweet grazer. <laughs> Rob, 24 months, thank you. Welcome back, happy anniversary. Assemble the players. I mean, you look at the top card of the library anytime, once on each turn. So also creatures will flash. Catch a creature spell power two or less at the top of your library. Very cool card. Not having the easiest time evaluating it, I guess.
think I'm gonna sandbag the Karn for a turn. We've got a little bit of mana next turn. <laughs> turn four, seven lands in play. Oh yeah, this costs every single card in Yogg. Uh, this card is very interesting. We will definitely try it. We will definitely try to build around it. It's like a two-mana Elvish Chorus in Yogg Mouth. Well, the thing is, Elvish Chorus is like a two-mana Elvish Chorus. Because th th it'll give you back <laughs> two mana most of the time you play it. And it's in green, and it's not restricted to one a turn. But, I don't know. That, that card is definitely very cool. Let's play probably Cabal Coffers as our land for turn. Let's see if we find an Emrakul off the stirrings. And a Golos. Yeah, slash Besage you. Uh, I'll grab the Golos. Just tapped all the mana. Maybe Hammer. Uh, Hammer doesn't probably have enough creatures at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, it feels good to be back. It is an interesting one. Uh, I think I'm going to go to five here. I tend to hate three mana enchantments that you have to, like, untap with and build around. This one is pretty good. I, I would like it a lot, 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 lot more if it was red instead of blue. So you could ritual into it. Put back second stirrings, probably. In case something for Dimulich. This is a storm card, not a Dimulich card. This is too. The, the thing about Dimulich is Dimulich is too fast for this. Like you wanna, you wanna be you wanna be putting Dimulich into play like on turn two or like putting like multiple Dimuliches and Phoenixes in play on turn three. Case of Ransacked Lab is for Storm with Forge News for Hammer. I I don't know. I I, I like the I like the card. I, I I don't dislike this uh case of the Ransacked Lab. Interesting draw. I'm just gonna play this turn one. A little bit more info on my card selection spells and the ability to maybe even play Scrying next turn. So I feel like that's what I want to cast. The storm, even though I wonder if it's a hair slow. If if it was red, I would be super excited about it. You would have so many turn three kills with it. It's blue though. You have to have you need to cast four spells on turn before your full storm turn. No, you just, it's just, it goes online during your storm turn. I think you sort of like mana morph those draw two, like go crazy. When your rituals draw a card, you're going to feel like the game is broken also. Okay, I think I'm just going to actually cast Explore this turn. It'll be okay copying Sunken Citadel if it resolves. Okay, also if this gets pierced, I'm pretty happy. Thoughts on you, Tristani? Uh, I love Tristani, my first ever... Magic event I ever played. I had this it was the Celestia Return to Ravnica pre-release kit. Tristani I thought was so cool. I I think the new Tristani card is cool and it is also um, looks unplayable in every constructed format. Gamers, are merc type players playing Magus or Blood Moon right now? Probably a mix of both, like 1-1. One, one. Oh, cases get solved at instep only. Okay, then the card is just not good. I thought that they just became, like, considered to be solved. Magus, which you never know. Yeah, okay. 
I'll just be on Dismember then. I, I, I have the Besages. Neutral Sunny is also not at all evocative of Ultra Sunny. Yeah, people people say this a lot. I don't I don't really care like about like like isn't it nice for the characters to like evolve and change and not be like the same forever? I don't know. Although maybe Shastani specifically isn't a character who's super known for going and changing. Alright, they decided to counter the one ring. We go to game two. Tough mulligan on the uh on the draw there to mold the five. I have boarded an Emrakul against Murktide with these kind of decks before, just being uncountable so nice. I think I'm, I'm not going to do that today, though. Yeltsin Megolos. Yeah, but I, I also don't really care about the lore too much. But you guys, you change a lot to Evasion. Well, that's good then. It's good that they're changing. My guess is they want opponents to prevent the case from being solved. I guess that makes sense, yeah. Flavorfully. I think we mulligan. We just really want to be doing our coffers or board plan. What I like about this hand is I can get coffers and I can copy it with Vesuva and be kind of set up for whenever I do find my Urborg. And I can do that because I have the Yamamaya to like not worry about having coffers in play. Oh, this card. This is this card's weird. Two it makes a two one that, and you suspect it, and then when whenever you don't have that two one anymore, you can sacrifice it to demonic tutor for spin two mana, just just like literally demonic tutor. Um, I don't mind if I do I draw the best possible. I don't think I'm supposed to save Dismember there. The channel gives so much selection. But I, I don't think that this card is going to be good. But it is interesting. We can at least answer Blood Moon next turn. Sounds a combo with Diabolic Intent. I guess, yeah. I, it doesn't really seem like a modern card to me. Ben Farden, great username, think for 23 months. I don't think there's almost any chance I actually cast the ring next turn. They did put two cards on top. I'm, I'm going to try to make it to where the card spell pierces at least blank this game, and ideally we're going to wait till we can double spell before we start casting anything. Um... Casting Grazer seems fine. Although, I, I would have to put the... Yeah, I'd have to put the Besage you into play, which I actually don't really want to do. Punished. Yeah, like yeah, demonic. This is also something we're kind of finding out from the uh, from timeless a little bit. Yeah, but demonic tutor is not like super good in fair decks. Like you need, you, it's very good in like combo decks. Uh, it would be good in decks like cough, very good in coffers, you know, this kind of stuff. But it's it's not like some it's not a card that goes in every deck, you know. So they have Tide Binder, maybe? I'm, I, I'm gonna be very annoyed if they have Counterspell plus Pierce. I think I, I do think I have to uh, go for it. I 
Nice. Went for it, and it worked. They have a Ragavan in their hand. Not gonna, not gonna Legend roll the Urborg, but we'll play the Ragavan. Also, Lair of the Hydra off the Scrying. <coughs> Looking pretty, pretty lethal. Does the line of not copying something with Vesuva to have it come in untapped come in often? Um, I haven't done it. I would say it's like not going to come up. It will co 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 come up when you have Yavamaya more than when you have Urborg. Well, there's Ragavan 3 mystery cards. Gonna bring in some Force of Vigors game three. We also have a lot of mana and a Wandering and Karn the Great Crater in our deck. So, not feeling too bad about this game. Kind of feel like this is missequencing a little bit. They also exile Island to their iteration and can't play it. Yeah, this was almost certainly missequenced. Need to exercise to slot the new surveillance in. I mean, I think Espergorios is maybe like a particularly good one for it, but I, I think I think that you'll see them in almost every deck, to be honest, that that, that plays fetch lands. Also, this could have been a basic forest. Yeah, if we do draw we have six basic forests in the deck, we could draw one of those to find our Pasageu. So guys, you're getting hit by Ragavan, I guess. I said they have more iterations of mind to cycle. Well, they definitely should have played it before the Blood Moon, is what I was saying. Clears a basic forest in the top of my library. They have two cards in their hand. And they're playing a Merc Tide, so. Gonna need to draw some stuff. We get four draws though. Looking for a car and looking for a ring. Golos maybe. Yeah, Golos. I guess I'm not technically just dead, but not feeling great. Oh, I am sorry for the two damage. I was counting the three next turn, not the two right now for some reason. Emrakul cost. Dude, Emrakul cost nine and I have eight. Uh, and I drew nothing. Oh no, oh my gosh, I could have cast different cool. I could have uh, legend ruled my Urborg and then got a fifth type. Sorry gamers, alright. Practice sleep. I realized it's just like a split second too late. A bit of cool line. Split second too late. I yeah, need to undo. Yeah, actually, I think in paper you probably could pick it up there. Usually you can pick a land back up and play a different one if it if nothing's happened. Yeah, we saw this one. It is interesting. Oh, yeah, the Surveil Lands for Hellraiser Brews. Well, let's go. <laughs> Unironically, though. But I, but I agree. I, 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 it's going to be like pulling teeth to get the... Uh, to get the uh, Merktide players to play the, the Surveil Lands, I think. These lands seem super powerful, I agree. Yeah, 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 Mystic Sanctuary is much more powerful. I'm, I'm just making a comparison because they, they make your fetch lands more powerful, and that's that's what's nice about them. But Mystic Sanctuary is also like, I, I, I would play four Mystic Sanctuaries in several, several decks back when it was legal. Isn't a surveil land in Murktai just like a fetch we'll consider? I mean, it's not just like it, but I guess we could see. Yeah, it's actually kind of similar because you draw the land. But again, I I, I know, I know that the, I know that the Murktai players don't want to do it. I know they don't want to do it. <laughs> I guess I should have let on Yava Maya. Then I could go on Coffers Explorer, copy the Coffers with the Suva. Also, you have perfect mana. You're welcome, opponent.
Okay, so I have five mana. I'm gonna cast Golos and have a billion mana next turn. Yeah, yeah, you can keep more one. If, you can keep one more one mana fetch land hands with this kind of card. Whatever, Merc seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I think some people are going to be in this line. I think, I think that I think sixty percent of Merc Ted players are going to be very resistant to it. They're going to tweet a lot about it. They're going to trash talk it, but eventually they'll see the light. I think is my prediction. I, I also, and this this is this should maybe go without saying, uh, but I also could be wrong. We'll see. Time will tell. Obviously, very difficult to perfectly evaluate cards, having never played with them before. Okay, I'm gonna curse totem and win the game, but I'm also gonna get a fourth cabal coffers in play. Although I, I am turning off my golos, <laughs> that's okay. I think of some of the players as is, is a Cheerios combo. Yeah, you can only cast once a turn. Once a turn. We're talking about the new land cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're interesting. They're, they're cool to deck build with. Also, here's here's something too. Like, just try it. Like, literally just try the new cards. Something I always encourage people to do. Or, or let me try it for you. If you don't, if you don't want to just try it, I can try it for you too. Kenna's RC is released this weekend. Time to play all the new tech and mess my deck up. Yeah. I mean, I've never done this, but if my RC was released this weekend, which I'm not going to I'm not going to Denver. But you can you can test with your friends, you know. Like you can see the cards, you can proxy them, try them. It's Rhinos, pretty hard to mess it up. I mean I would I would recommend playing a surveil land at Rhinos too. I think over the Triumph probably. Like, especially, like, in Rhinos, you have, like, two... You have so many two-land hands that you're just like, well, brother, if I draw a third land, I can never lose. And the, the ability to just... The ability to just be like, well, I can actually... Oh, I can actually just fe fetch a surveil land and have, like, plus 50% odds of drawing a third land by turn three. It's just kind of crazy. Dude, I've, you have my air book again. Right as Living End for sure. So I, I actually feel less confident that Living End wants them. Where like Living End really does use all of its mana each turn. Um, but I it's 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 close. Coppers. Uh, uh Let's say cataracts. Malamuth is 19 months. Let's go. Thank you so much. Like another thing about living in too is your, your deck is already very, very consistent with the land cyclers and um, you know, like in a lot of ways too. Like the the land cyclers compete with this card. I think I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not really convinced that. It's something you want. So I can Karn for Totem. I can play Ring. Both lines are pretty scary. Let's let's try Karn for Totem, I guess. Good plus Karn also. Bad against Strangleroot and Grist. So I guess never doing that. But I'm just gonna assume they can find a quarter blood artist and 16 cards <laughs> and save us all a little bit of time. I guess 15 cards. And even if they don't, we're probably not favored to win that game. Game to win the play, though. If we can have a fast start. Uh, this is a pretty interesting keeper mulligan. We have Urborg plus coffers. We have like two grazers that are basically dead. We're playing twenty six lands. 
Obviously, this hand is insane if, like, the second grazer is a green source. As you figure out, 15 cards so fast. They have 17 life points, and they can draw one life for one card. I think I'm going to mulligan. And I would probably keep that 7 over any average 5. The point is, you don't care about the importance of the surveillability. You care about having untapped lands at the end of your opponent's turn. In Living End, yeah, like if, if that's what we're talking about. Like Living End, like really wants to use all of its mana on the first couple turns, like every single game. Okay, I think on five, I'm gonna put back the Grazer here. Not a very good hand, I guess. Turn one halfling again. And dismember again. I'm going to explore this turn, though. And then... Takanuma dismember. This does mean if I draw Ur exactly Urborg, I can't go list next turn, but that's, you know... If I draw Urborg next turn, I'm still happy enough. Young Wolf, six cards in their hand. No second land. Yeah, love to see that. Hate to see an uncastable card in this turn, but not the worst series of events ever. Looking for Ancient Stirring, Sylvan Scrying, or just you know any any land. They find their land. Sometimes they play Yavamaya in their deck too. No attacks because they have Cord and they want a Cord for Dryad Arbor, which makes sense. Oh, I guess still Cord for Dryad Arbor. Fuck. I drew my second Besaidu, which is so sad. Crazy my opponent goes from like missed their second land job to put three mana sources in play next turn. Bummer. So you're gonna kill my grit my card with Grist. You have the curse totem. Golos Nonbo again. Herb work to make up for the besiege you last turn. <laughs> Not quite that lucky. Totem knocks them back down to two mana. They're attacking four. Two, then three, then four, then five, etc. Analyze the pollen might be Is that is that a new card? Or that's oh that's the um the new traverse. Yeah, that card might be like significantly better than traverse, I agree. And it might, you know, might not do that much. Is it instant? It's a it's a sorcery. You have to play um what's it called? Yeah, if you if you play that card in your deck, you're gonna have to play a generous scent. Yeah, tough mulligan. This deck seems kinda inconsistent. Gone a little bit worse than it was yesterday. Pretty interesting backup deck too. We'll get across the bridge when we get there. This new Demog Tutor on a stick. Yeah, I, I don't like that card that much. Um, nor, nor do I like re really dislike it. I, I have mixed feelings. I, I think I think it'll probably see zero constructed play. Um. Maybe incredibly fringe play. Enchant land, ETB, exile target, dawn land permit you don't control until this leaves the battlefield. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its control adds one additional mana. Well, that's actually very cool. Oh 
almost the did the accidental layer activation, which will get you every time. Skeleton card might be played in Legacy with Culling the Week. Yeah, but then it's just like you're still playing a four mana tutor. It's so just Diabolic Tutor. Or pretty close to Diabolic Tutor, at least. Dude, Tabernacle would be sick in this deck. Matchup gets a lot better post board. Your Force of Vigor deck, your Karn deck. Maybe going to the backup deck soon. Just gonna do that now, I think. <laughs> We're gonna game two. I did win this matchup yesterday. I think I brought in these and I got the Golos's post board. Emrakul's really good against scales. Does the case solve when you have no skeletons or only on instep? I, I, cases only get solved on insteps too. So I was like, kind of excited about the instants and sorceries cost one less, but the fact that the fact it, the, the card is too bad. The, if, if the case got solved immediately, it'd be better. Instep is too bad. Oh, they reprinted Assassin's Trophy. Crime Novelist plus Ravager. I mean, yeah, Crime Novelist is interesting. You're mostly excited about that card with animation module, but then also like plus Ravager maybe, maybe in a uh, Goblin Engineer Cauldron style deck. Like it does put a counter on itself, so it gets activated abilities from Cauldron a bit easier, but it doesn't have any activated abilities itself. But eventually we'll get a we'll get our Cauldron deck, our Cauldron Goblin deck. Okay, so we have Dismember half of our combo plus Karn on four lands on the play against Scales. I think I'll keep. This set looks pretty good so far. There's like a good, a good amount of stuff that's like small, small black animations. <coughs> Excuse me. Prinko also kind of interesting in this like theoretical goblin artifact focus cauldron deck. Second artifact to tap, put a counter on each goblin you control. This is a cauldronable ability, it's immediately activated. And then whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard for the battlefield, you may pay red if you do. 1-1, one, one, gain haste. Wait, this wait, this just goes infinite with... Hold on, this just goes infinite with Cauldron and the new Goblin, right? Yeah, the Goblin tokens have haste. And they have a plus one counter. So if you, if you Cauldron Kiki's ability, and you have the other one in play, you just, just make infinite hasty Goblins. Okay, that's the combo. Wow, what a draw. They're not artifacts. Right. Damn it. That was gonna be cool. No, you're right. Never mind. I mean, still synergy with the card, but. Okay, plus the Karn. Seems very hard for them to play, so they make a Construct. Yeah, it, it, they would need to play four artifacts. I was thinking in a Mystic Forge deck. I don't know. For, Forge is good with cost reducers, usually. Which you need infinite red mana because you have to pay one red. Well, the new goblin gives the red. Every time you sack an artifact, you get a red, but that's not every time. Okay, plays another saga. It's their turn three. We can... Wait, they did play four artifacts. Fuck. Kind of brutal...
Seems like pretty tricky to do on that turn. We're not out of it yet. We may need to top deck. We can dismember this at least this turn. Let's see. So if they go land, Zabaz. Yeah, Zabaz doesn't actually grow this at all. I have four, six mana this turn, eight mana next turn. So I could Archon next turn. I could also, I could also get Karn back off Takanuma. Plus Dismember. And Karn for Ring next turn if I want. Thoughts on Profane Tutor over either Scrying or Stirrings? You, you don't have enough early black mana to play Profane Tutor in this deck. Yeah, I guess you need Mike and Sithlanus and then all your goblins are artifacts. Alright, so we'll go Dismember, paying one mana and two life. Also, why does Takanuma get back Planeswalkers? It's kind of gross. Sideboarded incorrectly, my opponent says. Sideboarded incorrectly. Okay, time for the backup deck. I think it's t probably thought it was like a Castle Garen Brig build though. They still have a second I think. Uh, backup deck is something we were talking about yesterday. 